The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. This leave is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Twenty years ago, the Kraft Foods Company introduced a wonderful new salad dressing, a superbly smooth, delicious-tasting salad dressing called Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip was so remarkably good that it soon became the most popular salad dressing ever created. Now Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined, and good cooks everywhere depend on it to make their salads better tasting. To bring out the best in your salads, use the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, in Summerfield this evening, there's a little breeze sifting through the trees, and soon the moon will be rising, and all in all, it looks like a romantic evening. But it means nothing to the great Gildersleeve. Since his girlfriends have been away on vacation, the water commissioner has been bobbing around aimlessly like a cork on his own reservoir. <laughs> What'll I do? How will I pass the time? You gonna stay home again tonight, Unc? Yeah. I've had a hard day at the office, Leroy. I think I'll go out and lie in the hammock, catch the breeze. You shoot the breeze all day and catch it at night, huh? <laughs> Oh, my boy. You're kind of lost without your girlfriends, aren't you? Well. Too bad Miss Tuttle and Miss Kelly both took vacations at the same time. Leroy, that doesn't concern me one bit. You know, I can get along without girls. Oh, sure. Besides, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Your line's just a little weak, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Young man, I haven't missed either one of them enough to even think about replacing them. When's Miss Kelly coming home? I don't know. I bet she's been busy at that summer resort. Leroy. I can see her being paddled around in a canoe by some good-looking dope, trailing her toe in the water. Yes, yes. No wonder she isn't writing. Well, I didn't expect her to write. And the fact she hasn't doesn't concern me one bit. <laughs> Watch it, young man. Yes, Bertie. Yes, Bertie. I think we got to give your mail when you came home tonight. Oh, some letters? Well, a postcard. It's a picture of a hotel by a lake. See, it's from May Kelly. Yeah. Oh, brother, and he didn't care if she wrote. Now, let's see what she said. Yeah, let's. Leroy stopped reading over my shoulder. Why does she sign it May XX? Can't she write her own name? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, them X's is more important than anything on the card. Much. Leroy, it isn't much. Corn? <laughs> Quiet, I'm reading. Hey, she misses me. Then why did she take so long to write? Well, I see now. This card was sent to the wrong address. <laughs> she missed you, all right. She didn't even know where you lived. <laughs> well, that's strange. She's been over here for dinner. Well, I probably had her so dazzled she didn't know where she was. <laughs> Right, George, I knew May had written. What a fine hand. What a fine woman. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet she's the prettiest girl at that resort. But she took time out to write to me. Uh, the breeze came up. Just why don't you go out in the hammock and cool off? <laughs> I should get down to the office. But I think I'll stop in at Peavy's and show him my postcard from May. Uh, I could hardly sleep all night. It is wonderful what a letter from a girl can do. A uh, postcard, rather. Hello, Peavy. Hello, yeah, Mr. Jolderson. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Peavy, guess what I got in the mail yesterday. A bill? <laughs> <laughs> no, not a bill. Now, you should have. I sent you one. Well, I didn't get it. And don't give up. You'll get it today. <laughs> yes, yes. Of course, if you want to pay your bill, I can tell you how much it is. 
I didn't come in here to pay my bill. I came in here to show you a postcard. It's fourteen dollars and thirty-five cents. <laughs> Phoebe, I'm not interested in my bill. Well, I am. <laughs> well, I'll take care of it in due time. Well, it's due. <laughs> Oh, dear. as a matter of fact, this is the bill I should have sent out on the first, so it's due. <laughs> All right. Now, how about paying some attention to my postcard? No, no. Yeah, it's from my girlfriend. Miss Tuttle? No, from May. May Kelly. You don't say. <laughs> hey, look, this is a picture of the place she's staying. This is her room right up at the top of the tree. She's living in a tree? <laughs> Phoebe, she's living in a hotel. That's her room on the fourth floor right over the tree. Hmm, that tree could come in candy in case she forgets her key some night. <laughs> All right. Now, about this bill that's due. Uh, yes. Look at the way she signed the card, Phoebe. Two exits. You got two votes for you? <laughs> you bet. And I like that kind of voting. I'll be glad when she gets home. I guess you will. Yeah, May is quite a girl. She didn't forget me. Mr. Gildersleeve, I wouldn't get too excited over a postcard. Phoebe, a girl doesn't write to you unless she's thinking about you. Right, George, I'm going to make it a point to call on me more often. Well, glad to hear it. That'll be good for the candy business. <laughs> Say, it wouldn't be a bad idea to meet her at the train. And take some candy. <laughs> yes, sir, I think I'll call her travel agency and find out when she's coming home. Uh, may I use your phone? Go right ahead. Yeah, that'll make a nice impression on her if I meet her at the train. Yeah, it was a box of candy. Hello? Kelly Travel Service? This is Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh, you remember me? Well, I'm calling to see when you expect me. You thought I'd meet her at the train. Oh, you expecting her tonight? At 6 o'clock? I better wrap up the candy. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Don't bother to have anybody else meet her. The situation will be well in hand. Goodbye. Phoebe, she'll be home tonight. That's what I hear. You don't have a fancy box of candy ready to go, do you? Yeah, I've already put it on that bill that's due. <laughs> about these X's on May's card, the more significant they become. <laughs> it's a beautiful time of day. Three o'clock in the afternoon. And in three more hours, she'll be here. And then in another three, the moon will be up. I'm glad I thought about inviting her for dinner. Bertie! That's just a scare me! <laughs> yes, Bertie. Bertie, I just had a great idea. Yes, sir? Miss Kelly's coming home this evening. Did you know postcard? Uh, no, I learned this by phone. Oh, she called you on the phone long distance. No, Bertie. I phoned her office and they told me. So I thought I'd surprise her, meet the train, and bring her here for dinner. Yes, sir. Just dinner for two, Bertie. You get the idea. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Leroy go down to Peavy's and eat. He'll like that. Yes, sir. I want everything to be a little extra special, Bertie. Oh, yes, sir. You want everything super-duper special. Yeah, and I'd like candles on the table. Soft light. I'm way ahead of you. Yeah, we might have a little <laughs> dinner music. Yes, sir. Bertie will cook the dinner, light the candles, serve the table, and spin the records. <laughs> Good. I'll depend on it. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilson, why don't we play some of the records you bought to take to that young lady at the swimming pool who was gone when you got there? <laughs> well, that's the type of music May will like. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bertie, what are you laughing about? No wonder you're such a popular bachelor. Oh? A girl drops you a postcard and you go all out. Well, that wasn't an ordinary postcard, Bertie. No, sir. That one had X's on it. You bet. Yes, sir. That card is extraordinary. Yes. That card is exceptional. <laughs> one you didn't expect. No, Bertie. So you're going extra all out. <laughs> well, why not? train's about due. I get pretty warm rushing down here. 
Yeah, your collar's curling, Unc. Hope the train isn't late. If it is, instead of carrying a box of chocolates, you'll be carrying a box of chocolate milk. Uh, look, Leroy, I gave you a ride as far as the depot. Now run on to Peavy's and get your dinner. I've got plenty of time. I want to watch the train come in. You've seen trains before? Not with Miss Kelly on them. You going to shake hands with her or kiss her? Uh, young man, you shouldn't be here when I meet Miss Kelly. Well, she won't know. I'll hide behind the baggage truck. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, here comes the train. Now, scoop. Scram. Okay. If I can't watch you meet her, can I read your diary later? Swan found it, Leroy. Okay, okay. I'll be down by the engine and I promise not to peek. That's the boy. Yeah, look at that steam shootout. Right, George, this is exciting. I mean, what a surprise this will be to me. You'll sleep, you know how to impress the women. Well, people are getting off, but I don't see May anyway. Oh, there she is. May! Why'd she turn around and walk the other way? Yeah, I guess she didn't see me. May! May! Oh, May! It's me, Throckmorton. Hey, it's wonderful to have you home. I'm glad to see you. And what a beautiful tan you have. Let me look at you. Up close. Hmm. Rockmorton, please. But I'm so happy to see you. Well, I'm happy to see you, too. Although I didn't expect to. Well, I wanted to surprise you. You certainly did. Oh, there you are, May. Yeah, yes. Come on over, Sam. Hey, here's your hat box. Oh, is this May's? Thank you for bringing it over. I'll take it. Why should you take it? Well... Uh, Stan, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. This is Throckmorton Gildersleeve. Oh, how do you do? I'm Stan Murray. Hey, nice meeting you, Stan. Now, come along, May. I have a big surprise planned this evening. Oh, but Throckmorton, you don't You'll understand... have dinner at my house, candlelight, and then moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really... Well, have... this sounds interesting. Oh, are you still here? Oh, yes. Throckmorton, I must tell you this. I got your postcard, May. Of course, I knew you'd be writing. Then I called the travel agency and they... Throckmorton, listen to me. What? Stan is my fiancé. Your fee, 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 fee. Fiancé. We're engaged. Great. May, you put X's on your postcard. Well, I, I... I wrote the card on Friday and I met Stan Saturday night. You mean it happened that fast? (laughs) <laughs> See? Oh, you know how it is in the summer, Throckmorton, when you're away and, and everything. Oh, yes. Well, I'll get our luggage, May. Uh, Throckmorton, can we drop you someplace? I've already been <laughs> dropped. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Looking for a summer party menu that doesn't call for hours of cooking and pampering? Then try this. Heat some good soup, serve some fancy breads, and make a wonderful shrimp salad, one with sliced celery, sliced stuffed olives, and for a truly elegant touch, some chopped walnuts. Now, of course, you want to be sure to use the right salad dressing. The salad dressing with just the lively, teasing flavor you want. So, choose the dressing with the flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip is simply delicious with a peppy, different flavor. A flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing. That's because Miracle Whip is made by Kraft from a secret recipe and combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. Miracle Whip has a perfect texture, too. It's creamy, thick, and smooth as satin because it's blended thoroughly with special craft beaters. Use Miracle Whip on your salad. Whether they're beautiful, fancy ones or the simple day-in, day-out favorites, they'll taste better than ever made with Miracle Whip. That's why Miracle Whip has become America's favorite salad dressing, outselling the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Just be sure you see the name on the jar you buy. Miracle Whip Salad Dressing, made by Kraft. Well, when 
the fi- great Gildersleeve finally got a postcard from his girlfriend, May Kelly, he read too much between the lines. He met her at the train with candy under his arm and plans for dinner. She met him with a handsome man on her arm and plans for marriage. Mm-hmm. Came like a bolt from the blue, Bertie. Yes, sir. I thought that train whistle sounded a little mournful. <laughs> that pushy Stan walked away with her, and there I stood with egg on my face. Yeah, and chocolate running down your sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> well, the candy had melted by that time. What are we going to do with all this dinner? Well, Leroy said he'd come home and eat with me instead of going to Peavy's. Sure. Personally, I'm not very hungry. Mr. Gilsey, you shouldn't take it so hard. After all, you didn't have any strings on her. Did you? Well... Not exactly. Heck, no. He didn't want her till the other fella got her. <laughs> Leroy, that's not true. Her engagement just made me realize I missed the boat. Oh, boats are like streetcars. There'll be another one along any minute. <laughs> there ain't many boats like that, dreamboat. No, indeed. What does Miss Kelly's intend to do, Miss Gilsley? He was a lifeguard at the resort. Yes. What did he do, save her? Oh, I don't know. Wait till he gets to the altar. He'll be the one yelling for help. <laughs> Leroy, please. Must have been a whirlwind courtship. She's only been gone two weeks. Well, you know how it is, Bertie. Summertime romance. Moonlight and big doses. Yes, sir. Well, let's forget it and eat. Uh, Leroy, it isn't that easy. Okay, let's eat and then forget it. <laughs> well, we might as well. You want the candles lit, Miss Gilsey? No, no. Let's just turn on the lights. Heck no! Light the candles. Let's live it up. <laughs> Leroy, how can you take this so lightly? Well, I didn't mean it that way, Unc. I want this dinner to be just the way you planned it. We'll light the candles, and I'll sit at Miss Kelly's place. Great. <laughs> I guess we, I guess we can skip the soft music. Yeah, please do, Bertie. If I hear any soft music, I might cry. Oh, poor Mr. Gilsey. If it means so much to you, why don't you put up a fight? What? Don't let that lifeguard push you around. Yeah. If I was you, I'd get that Miss Kelly back. It may be too late, Bert. It's getting later. Let's eat. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Gilsey, I'd get that Miss Kelly back. Bertie, they're engaged. But you knew her first. You got squatters right. <laughs> You're as handsome as he is, ain't you? (laughs) What's this, young man? Bertie, you haven't seen the guy. He's got one of those deep tans and shoulders this big. Well, Mr. Gilsey's big. Yeah, but not in the right places. (laughs) Leroy, let's drop the subject. Pretty hard subject to drop. I thought if I came here to my den and buried myself in a good book, I could forget May. 8.30. I wonder what May and that stand are doing now. The moon's coming up. They could be parked out by my reservoir. I never did trust a lifeguard when he's off duty. Yeah, I can just picture them now. Out there in the moonlight. Holding hands. Stand, darling. Uh, perhaps I should hold you closer. There's a breeze coming off the reservoir. Why didn't I put a fence around that reservoir? <laughs> there. That better? Yes. Stan, you're so strong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I should have taken that weightlifting course. <laughs> oh, isn't life wonderful? It's been wonderful every minute since we met. Yeah. Here we are engaged, and we've only known each other since Saturday night. But it seems we've known each other always. Oh, there's never been anyone but you. Ah, what about that fat guy who met you at the train? (laughs) Oh, I feel sorry for him. What's his name? Gilderslob? (laughs) Gildersleeve. Oh, what's the difference? Sleeve, slob. (laughs) I ought to go out there and chase him right into the reservoir. Rock Morton is a very nice man. Yeah, but I'm too late with too little. (laughs) Well, let's forget him. 
Shall we set the date, darling? There's no reason to wait. Shall we say tomorrow? Tomorrow. Let's seal it with a kiss. Mm. Let's seal it with a kiss. Mm. Let's seal it with a kiss. Hmm. Gildersleeve, get hold of yourself. <laughs> you have to stop thinking about it. You're just torching yourself. Well, now that I know she's gone, it won't do any harm to tell her how I feel about her. I'll just go to her house and say, May, now that you're being married, I just want you to know if he hadn't asked you, I would have. No, he'll be there. Old Musclebound might take it the wrong way. <laughs> I know. I'll sit down and write her a letter. I'll bear my heart. Why, George, why should I be the only one that's sad? Let her feel a little of this, too. My beloved May. Yeah, I've never written that to anybody. <laughs> this is the last letter you'll be getting from me. What can I do for you this evening? I just want a stamp, Phoebe. Now, there's the machine. Three trees for a dime. Well, I only need one stamp for this letter. I doubt if you can get only one out of that machine. Oh, for... don't you have some stamps in your cash register? Not anymore, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why? Because we keep them in the machine. <laughs> All right, I'll use the machine. It seems silly to buy three stamps when you only have one letter to mail. Yeah, I'll write some more letters. <laughs> I don't want to write any more letters. I'll probably never write another letter. To a girl, anyway. <laughs> this is sort of a farewell message to May. I thought she just got home. Yeah, but she brought somebody with her. You don't say. She's engaged, Petey. Well, it was only yesterday you got the postcard with the accident. She wrote that the day before she met him. My, my. Mrs. Peavy and I were engaged four years before we were married. And I thought that was a little hasty. <laughs> Phoebe, weren't you ready? I was, but my pocketbook wasn't. <laughs> well, with May and Stan, it was love at first sight. Oh, I can see where a man could lose his head pretty fast over Miss Kelly. Yeah, I was about to propose to her myself. I don't recall you mentioning that. Well, a man doesn't talk about these things. I know I haven't a chance, but I wanted to know I'd have married her if that pushy lifeguard hadn't come along. Are you sure that isn't the reason you're writing? What? Because you know you haven't a chance. Peavy, are you insinuating I don't mean what I say in this letter? Well, I don't know what you're saying. You care to read it to me? No. <laughs> but I got down the cases and confessed my feelings in black and white. Mm -hmm. Putting it in writing has gotten a lot of men in trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I wanted to give her something to think about on her honeymoon. That letter must be dynamite if she's going to think about it on her honeymoon. <laughs> It's loaded, Peavy. And I want her to get it before she leaves. Bye, George, I don't think I'll mail it. I'll take it over to her apartment tonight and drop it in her mailbox. Are you going to steam off the stamp, or do you think what's in the letter will do the trick? <laughs> All right, Peavy. I'll admit it's a touching letter, but I want her to feel my loss a little. I think. I wouldn't be the worst catch in the world, Peavy. No. When that lifeguard bleaches out, Miss May Kelly might have a rude awakening. Mm -hmm. That could be. The day may come when she'll wish she had a good, solid water commissioner instead of a handsome lifeguard. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. There's a light in May's window. I guess they're talking over wedding plans. I'll just tiptoe up on the porch, drop my letter in the mailbox, and vanish out of her life. Here goes part of my heart. Mm, now she'll know. Whoop. Why, Throckmorton. Uh, uh, hello, May. Oh, I thought I heard someone at the door. Yeah, me. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Won't you come in? Yeah, well, I don't think I should, under the circumstances. Oh, don't be silly. Yeah, but what about Stan? Oh, he isn't here. Come on in. You sure he isn't here? Oh, Throckmorton, come in. Yeah. You know, when you met me at the train, 
I didn't have a chance to tell you how thrilled I was to see you. Oh? Uh, sit down here on the couch by me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't sit on the edge. Relax. Well, it just doesn't seem the time or the place to relax. <laughs> Where is Stan? It's early. Won't he be back this evening? Ralph Morton. Yes? Stan won't be back, ever. He won't? I'm afraid our engagement was a mistake. It was? Mm-hmm. Fortunately, both of us realized it in time. Oh, but you know how it is. I'm impetuous, and so is Stan. I'm just beginning to realize I am, too, in a way. <laughs> I, I suppose ours was the old story. Not many summer romances stand up when you get back home. I guess it was the dancing, the moonlight, the canoe rides that made me forget for a little while how much I thought of you. Me? You're so solid and dependable. Oh, you'd never do anything rash like me. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure Stan didn't really want to get married. You come to think of it, I don't either. Ralph Morton. Yes? When you met me at the train, I began to see you in an entirely different light. The candy you brought, the dinner plans you made. Oh, you were wonderful. No, May, let's not be too impetuous. <laughs> I may not be the man you think I am. Well, that's another thing I like about you. You're modest. Do you suppose it's possible for a girl to fall out of love and in again all in the same day? Mm. Rock Morton, I know why you came here tonight. Because we're being irresistibly drawn together. No, I came up here to mail a letter. Oh? And if you don't mind, I think I should get it out of your mailbox. Oh, are, are, are you going to give it to me personally? No, I'd better keep it. I wrote it when I thought you and Stan were going to be married. Why, Throckmorton, did you threaten to do something desperate? I'll say. <laughs> Good night, May. See you around someday. Well. Hmm, that was close. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Nothing goes quite so well with the hamburgers we all like so much as really good coleslaw. And to be sure your coleslaw is at its delicious best, make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip will give it a wonderful flavor, a flavor that's peppy and just sharp enough, a flavor your whole family will like. Treat your folks to some good coleslaw soon. And remember, to make it even better tasting than ever, make it with the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, there's only one thing to do. Burn this letter I wrote to May. I'll toss it in the fireplace. Hey, Unc. Hello, Leroy. You starting a fire in the summertime? I'm just burning my bridges. Oh, I get it. Bernie's right, Unc. What? You got a postcard from one of your girls, and right away you flip your lid. No, Leroy. Miss Kelly had you practically engaged 24 hours after you met the train. Yes, yes. Excuse me! What is it, Bertie? You got good news. It smells like violet. Oh? I think it's from Miss Tuttle. Hey, I bet she wants you to meet the train. Not me. I've met a train. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willie Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Ketley, Lillian Randolph, George Keith, Lola Bond, and Dick LeGrand. This is a composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Easton saying goodnight for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Picnic coming up? Make those picnic sandwiches taste extra good with Miracle Sandwich Spread. Miracle Sandwich Spread is made by Kraft. From America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, and spicy relishes. See what a wonderfully different flavor, what tang Miracle Sandwich Spread adds to your meat or cheese sandwiches. Or use it alone between slices of bread for a sandwich that's really thrifty and quick and easy to fix. Stop at your grocer's first thing tomorrow and take home a jar of delicious Miracle Sandwich Spread.
Tonight, enjoy the best of Groucho on NBC.